Chapter 5 Caven and Mimi struck off again as soon as they caught their second wind, moving fast through the benighted woods, hurrying to regroup with Caven's allies in the ravine, if they were still there. Caven came to an abrupt halt, arm out to stop Mimi. There's something ahead. Mimi tensed, eyes wide, peering into the dark trees. She saw nothing, but gave Caven a sidelong glance, deferring to his night vision. What is it? Caven took his spear in both hands, poised to move. Two figures, coming in this direction. Caven and Mimi hastened to place thick tree trunks between themselves and the oncoming figures. After several seconds of dead silence, Mimi could hear the tramp of feet in the snow drawing closer. She pressed her back against the tree, straining her ears to follow a few words passing between what she could now tell was a pair of men. Caven's voice rang out in the darkness. Hayden! Caven swung around his tree, stepping into view after he announced himself. Nervous, but following Caven's lead regardless, Mimi drifted into sight as well. The surprised men, standing in snow, bathed in faint light from the starry vault above, could not have been more different from each other. One figure leaned on the spear he carried as though it was a walking stick. The other held his spear at his side smartly. The man called Hayden was tall, broad-shouldered, and wrinkled in the extreme. His haggard appearance was far beyond the tired, hungry, thirsty look all the trapped warfighters shared. He was old, and the years had not been kind. That much was obvious even at first sight, even in low light. The other person was smaller, beardless, bright-eyed and youthful. His cheekbones had perhaps become more defined than they usually were, but the fatigue and deprivation of the ravine seemed not to have otherwise left a mark on him. Caven, Hayden said, we came for you. I don't know what you did to sow such chaos in the enemy encampment, but our unit capitalized on it and escaped from the ravine unwatched. Caven sighed, releasing a breath he did not realize he had been holding. The unit is safe. The horror did not sweep clear over the mercenaries onto my allies below. Good, Caven said. Let me guess, the Stara didn't hesitate to move. Sure, we'd find the trail and regroup with everyone eventually. Hayden chuckled. Yes, but leaving that to chance didn't sit right with me. She let me split off to find you with word of where the rest had gone, and sent Skeevery with me. Caven nodded to the quiet young man. The young man nodded in return. The chaos in the enemy camp, Caven began, turning again to Hayden, was not our doing. Something came for them, and it was pure chance we were there to see it. Hayden furrowed his brow. What? What did you see? Caven removed his mask, meeting Hayden's eyes. He grimaced. Horror. A skirmish line of risen dead, lichen and vines where skin and sinew had been. I don't know what they are or where they came from. And it seems the mercenary didn't either. Hayden's jaw fell. He hastily made a superstitious gesture with one hand, something taught in Thrave temples, adopted as a folksy warding sign. He cleared his throat. We should regroup with the others, he said. Whatever it was you beheld, I doubt it is over. The group made the next leg of the journey less hastily, reassured by each other's presence and able to spare some attention for stealth. They branched away from the direct course back to the ravine and traveled instead towards the next valley over where, Hayden explained, the unit had relocated. They picked their way with care, keeping the noise to a minimum, watching constantly for any movement or light between the trees. Caven, again, with his mask back on and thus superior night vision, 
was the first to realize they were not alone in the looming stretch of dark trees. Wait, Caden snapped, stopping short. There is someone. Chewing her lip, Mimi listened intently. She heard the crash of a person staggering through snow and underbrush, making no apparent effort to be sneaky. She tugged at Caven's sleeve. Can you see who it is? I think it's one of the enemy mercenaries, Caven whispered, gaze fixed on as far as the others could see, pure blackness between trees. Mimi nodded. Caven used a metal barb on the shaft of his spear to hook into a leather thong attached to his backpack, suspending it securely and freeing his hands. He drew a knife from a sheath at his side. Get into position, Caven said, glancing at Hayden and Skeevery. He didn't need to explain to the warfighters what that meant. Both fanned out into the trees, with Caven moving directly for the mercenary while the others took flanking positions ready to close in with a pincer attack at the crucial moment. Mimi followed closely behind Caven, watching dazedly as the back of the starlit mercenary came into focus, even to her unaided sight. The man staggered through the snow, pressing forward, heedless of branches and bushes. Caven reversed his grip on the knife, running the blade along his forearm. He coiled himself, moving in a crouch, drawing close enough to spring on the oblivious, staggering man as his own racket drowned out every little sound which might have alerted him. Wait, Mimi blurted in a strained whisper, grabbing at Caven before he could spring the final feet onto his target's back. Caven whirled around, mask impassive, glaring at Mimi through it. What? The moment was already lost. The mercenary continued ahead, unaware how close he had been to Caven's knife. Mimi clutched Caven's arm, her eyes paradoxically abstracted, like she was dreaming on her feet. He's a carrier, Mimi stammered. Caven tensed, lowering his knife arm and listening. The horror from the camp, Mimi said. He bears it. It's in him. Caven whirled around again, signaling urgently for a Hayden and Skeevery not to attack, hoping they had a line of sight to him. There was a rustle, like wind through branches. Then the two warfighters were with Mimi and Caven. What is it? Hayden whispered, jaw tight. We were in position to... We must give that man a wide berth, Caven hissed. Hayden's wrinkles deepened. But he asked no questions and nodded. The group broke into a quick walk, steering around the oblivious mercenary, letting him stagger into the darkness, limbs swinging stiffly. Hayden's boot came down on a fallen branch. The crisp, echoing pop carried through the still night. The tramp of the mercenary's feet stopped. Aghast, Mimi slowly warily craned her neck to glance the way they had come. She saw the back of the starlit mercenary, stock still, arms hanging by his sides. A chilling realization wormed its way into her mind as she stared, and she processed what it was she had intuited already, but not reasoned through. The figure's shoulders were neither rising nor falling, there was no fog of breath in the frigid air. A resounding crack of bones rippled through the night, buzzing against the trees. The standing corpse of the mercenary arched its spine, dropping its head back. Mimi glimpsed the pasty slack face at an unnatural angle as a mop of greasy black hair fell aside. From the upper chest, shoving away tatters of fur and cloth, a slithering atrocity burst forth into the starlight, uncoiling like a plant stalk pushing through leaf litter, sickly yellow, spiderwebbed with veins of red, terminating in a pointed crimson bulb. The bulb opened, petals unfurling, inner surfaces studded with thorns like curved teeth. The stalk bulged, 
the thing roared, a breathy, palateless, resounding sound. The human corpse bending backwards, knees snapping in the wrong direction, the toothed new head angled itself towards its living prey. The arms and legs of the corpse split open, tendrils and vines slithering into view, like a knot of tangled snakes spilling across the ground. Gray pollen shimmered in star and moonlight, shaken from inside folds of the corpse's garments. Heart lurching, Caven shrank back a step as the brutality of the transformation played out before him in vivid detail. He grabbed at his spear on reflex and quickly glanced at Mimi, about to tell her to run into the dark woods and not look back. He froze. Mimi's eyes were cerulean lights severing the darkness. Caven tilted his head. What? Her small body flashed across the space between them like a reposting sword, and Mimi drove her shoulder into the mass of the creature and knocked it back. Loosing its airy, tongueless roar, it sent a flailing halo of vines grasping for purchase on trees and branches to steady itself as it teetered. Mimi dug her heels into the ground, bracing herself, as swirling fires flared alive in the night, casting ruddy light between trees across the snow. She stretched her palms towards the horror, unleashing a tide of shimmering fire. The thing's emotionless roar did not change as it was engulfed in flames, its bulbous head withering and blackening. Understanding nothing they were seeing except that Mimi had knocked the thing off balance, the men, emboldened, wheeled around it, flanking it. They stabbed their spears into its tough, fibrous hide, levering it to the ground as Mimi transfixed it with another jet of blazing fire from her outstretched hands. The roaring ceased. One by one, tendrils stopped spasming and lay still amidst drifting sparks and cinders. No sound now stirred the air except the heavy breathing of the warfighters as they rested their scorched spears free and the crackle of smoldering flames hollowing the ruined body of the monstrosity. Oily smoke gouted past bare branches, dissipating in the gentle wind above. Caven turned to Mimi. He removed his mask, looking at her with his own eyes as she, in turn, stared at the smoldering body on the forest floor, as if she was just as dumbfounded by what she had done as Caven was to have seen her do it. Mimi, Caven said. She was startled from her reverie. When she turned to him, Caven saw that her eyes had reverted to their natural forget-me-not blue. Mimi saw Caven's expectant face in the firelight. The questions did not need to be asked aloud. She shook her head. I am doing what I vowed to do but we have no time to wonder about any of this at the moment. She held her hand above the corpse, as if warming herself by the burning heap of tatters and bones. I believe, she started, there is a silent understanding in the energy which emanates from the creatures. What one sees, they all see. That is why they scattered from the camp. It was to screen for any survivors who escaped, like us. Caven flinched. So the creatures now know we are here. Mimi frowned and nodded. Caven replaced his mask, grabbed Mimi's upper arm, and led the way into the trees with Hayden and Skivri following. The group dashed through the frozen understory at full tilt, dimly aware at first of a racket in the darkness behind them. It danced on the edge of perception, a murmuring echo of their own footfalls, a fear, unfounded, intangible. But the sounds grew louder, becoming unmistakable. The pursuit was not only their worst fear playing out in tortured imagination, it was a reality. Without glancing back into the royal night, Caven grit his teeth and pushed himself to sprint ever faster while he felt the teeming dead closing in like relentless dogs on the scent of their quarry. 
He gripped Mimi's arm tighter, dragging her with him while her thin legs churned the snow. He grimaced, hearing the wheezing, frantic breath of old Hayden as he struggled to match their pace. Lestara stood, arms crossed, watching the tree line at the top of a slope where the sunken valley climbed to a forested headland. Behind her, the large, level tract of an ice-locked lake glowed palely beneath the night sky. She caught herself holding her breath and sighed. Mimi and Caven generated quite a distraction back there, she thought. But did they get out afterwards? Hayden should be here with them all by now. She distractedly placed a hand on the muscular neck of her horse, which was scraping at the snow at her side with its hoof, digging for hidden tufts of dry plants beneath. The animal whinnied softly and ducked its head to nibble at whatever it had found as Lestara stared into the soft darkness, gaze unbroken. Shapes darted from the tree line, dashing down the slope. Lestara's backbone went ramrod straight, seeing the people an instant before she heard a frantic voice tearing through the air. Run! They're coming! She couldn't tell who exactly was yelling, but the breathless voice did not relent keening a warning as the four figures spilled down the snowy incline, half falling, arms flapping in the air. Lestara saw another, larger wave of shapes break the tree line soon after. This one, voiceless. The force emerging from the dark trees, rushing towards the valley below, carried no light and raised no battle cry. <laughs>